Why are co-ops in New York so relatively inexpensive? Well, it really boils down to three reasons. Uh, number one, you can't rent out a co-op. It's, it's not something that, it's not, you can't convert your home into an investment property with a co-op. The way most co-op rules work is that you either must be owner-occupied or there are very, very strict limits on how often uh, you can sublet or rent out your unit. Usually, uh, maybe one out of th uh, five years or um, you know, two out of ten years, it's, 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 a, it's a low percentage. You pretty much have to live there. Right? Um, and for that reason, it, it, uh, it's a single-use property. You, have to, you pretty much have to live there, and it cannot be flipped into an investment. Number two, co-op boards are notoriously a pain in the butt. And what I mean by that is the smallest things like installing a new dishwasher or um, changing your blinds or soundproofing your windows or whatever issue you might have in your Manhattan apartment, you typically must get board approval, which can take time. It can take layers of bureaucracy um, and maybe not even bureaucracy. Maybe you just don't get along with one of the board, uh, the co-op board members and they want to make your life difficult. I mean, that kind of happens sometimes. Um, so yeah, being in a living in a co-op uh, and being sort of under the regime of the co-op board can be very frustrating and unpleasant at times. Depends on your situation totally. If you're on the board, it can be very sweet, sweet life. <laughs> and then lastly, because of these two above listed reasons, you know you can't turn it into an investment, and because sometimes living in a in a co-op can be quite a pain. They're very hard to sell. I mean, there's that that really limits the market. I mean, if you're in the process of buying a co-op now, you're probably going through the part where you have to interview and get accepted, like you're applying to college or preschool or whatever again, um, and put together an application package and maybe even write an essay. I don't know. Some of these boards are kind of crazy. I know there's a board that will want to interview your pets if, uh, if you do have pets. So that's the kind of extent to which um, you have to sort of uh, present yourself for acceptance to these co-ops. So imagine if you're going through that, when you turn around years from now and seek to sell, your pool of potential buyers will be very limited because it'll be the number. It'll only be the people who are either willing to go through that and who will actually pass that sort of vetting process by the co-op board. So for those reasons, uh, you know, it's it's not an investment or it can't be made into an investment. Living there can be difficult depending on how well you get along with the board. And for those reasons, it's much less liquid. It's harder to sell. There's fewer buyers. And those are the reasons why co-ops are relatively less expensive than comparable condos or townhouses or other types of property in New York. I make this answer based on my almost 20 years of experience as a New York attorney and as author of How to Buy Your Perfect First Home. Hope you found this helpful. Take care.